morning. Good morning. Good evening. I know it's your evening time, <laughs> your time. Thanks for That's having me. Thanks for you. setting this up. Real excited to be here. Thank you. Um, I hope it's a proper time for you. It's not very early. It's um, 10 It's a great time right? for me. It's a great time. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You know, um, we saw your profile and many of the people who have joined us here today, they all saw your profile and they were like really, really impressed. And they really wanted to know about you and what you have done to overcome your problems and how you actually guide people with regards to autoimmune, the inflammation and all kinds of symptoms. So, yes. Sure. So, I'll uh, pass it on to you. Uh, firstly, doctor, if you can just introduce yourself in brief. Sure, absolutely. Uh, Dr. Benjamin Benulis. Um, I'm based in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, I've been in practice for three years. Uh, before that, for 10 years, I worked as an engineer in the microchip industry. Oh. And I did that until I became very sick with a disease that at the time, 10 years ago, doctors couldn't diagnose or treat or figure out what it was. And so I had um, chronic fatigue, chronic muscle pain throughout my body, eczema all over my hands, like really bad, cracked and peeled and red and inflamed. I had really, really bad digestive issues. And I basically, at the time, would go to different doctors and they wouldn't be able to help me. They would say, well, you know, uh, we'll, we'll run your blood labs and we'll take a look and try to figure this out. And then the labs would come back and if there would be, everything would look normal, right? And they would say, whoa, you know, everything looks normal or we can't help you or let me send you to this other specialist who would then like evaluate me and go, oh, I don't know, nothing really seems wrong with you. We can tell and you so, that. <laughs> uh, so in idiom, we, we say in America, I got the runaround. And eventually I was like, doctors can't help me. I need to figure this out on my own. And so I started just researching and looking up, um, you know, articles and reading books and watching documentaries. And it pretty soon came to the conclusion that if things were going to get better, I had to change my diet and what I ate. That was probably the number one thing. And I didn't want to do that. I really didn't, really didn't want to. But, uh, <laughs> you know, when you're running out of options, you're like, okay, I'll do it, you know? And, um, and so that's when I started um, just trying to eat more fruits and vegetables. I didn't really know what I was doing. I was just like, okay, I heard these are health food. I'm going to eat them. I'm going to make smoothies because that's just a, a quick way to do it. Like I used yeah. to be like a microwave guy, like throw the food in the microwave. That's fast. Well, you know, you same thing. Like, ready, yeah. <laughs> throw the food in the blender, right? Hit a button and then it's ready. And then go, go, go. like, I just, I wanted the lazy way. And, um, and so I started doing that. And then I started like looking up smoothie recipes because the ones that were making weren't tasting so good. And that's just when I came across more and more information and, and um, got more and more towards the, 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 the plant-based and raw strategy. And that's when I started to see dramatic improvements in my health. And I just got so excited by all that happening that I said, oh, you know what? I hit 30 years old. I was like, it's time for a change in my life. I want to do something meaningful. And there was no doctor that could help me 10 years ago. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be the guy. I'm going to step up and be the person that helps people with this. So wow. here I am. That's what we're doing now. So that's my oh backstory. My God. <laughs> Salute to you, you know. It's so nice. From an engineer to a doctor, you could not get help. You found self-help and now we're helping all the people around wow <laughs> you really need that <laughs> i'm so glad i'm interacting with you and um, you know you're doing a similar thing ritu right like you're you're doing a similar thing that you realize that um that there's not enough people <laughs> speaking up and so you got to do it and you're doing a fantastic job thank you so much thank you so much i'm so happy that i'm I finally connected to you and i'm you know, able to bring you up and your story here in front of everyone. And so people are really liking it. I can see that, you know, all the claps and applauses are already here for you. <laughs> well, that's amazing, doctor. So tell me one thing. Uh, yes, like you said, you were the lazy person and you always, you know, were a microwave person. And then you had to switch over to something really healthy and it must be such a pain. <laughs> So give me some tips, you know, so if someone is actually like you, uh, like your older self and is maybe newly diagnosed with MS or any other autoimmune disease, um, what thing, you know, person should do first as a step-by-step -step process to switch over to a healthy diet from a non-healthy diet? 
Sure, great question. Um, so I think a, a lot of people get hung up on the like, oh, I shouldn't drink dairy or I shouldn't eat meat anymore or I shouldn't have Cheetos or processed, like they get all caught up in the like the don'ts. Like I don't eat this and I don't do that and I don't and I can't have this and I can't have that and it's like the walls are closing in on them. Oh no, like I can't do anything fun. Um, <laughs> I, I want people to think in terms of inclusion instead of exclusion. So like right behind me, I just got a giant pile of bananas, right? Yeah. Like just focus on including new foods, info, okay. especially fruits and vegetables, especially that's like the number one thing. And just okay. make it a fun thing to eat more fruits and vegetables and okay. try new smoothie recipes. And like I said, I was lazy. So I wasn't like, one, it, this actually works out if you're lazy because <laughs> you don't need to make complex recipes. I never do. I, I, most of the foods I eat are simple. I eat a lot of like, one ingredient meals of one type of fruit. Um, so make it simple and fun and just work on just, you know, go to the grocery store, buying a lot of fruits and vegetables and making it, you know, buying the ones you want to eat that look appealing and making a challenge to eat lots of them every day and just work on including more and more of the good stuff. And then the other stuff will just kind of slowly fade away. And then when you're ready to make a big step, like go completely plant-based or go vegan or, or whatever it is, it just, you kind of already been doing it already. And it's not that big of a leap. Um, so that, that's my advice. Okay. And tell me one thing. What about the distractions that you have? So when you're going out with your friends, with your family, they are you know, enjoying the non-healthy things, all the fried yeah. items and all the things in the world which looks delicious. How do you control your temptations then? Um, good question. So I think the... Um, there's, there's a few ways to do that. And, and most of it revolves around being prepared. And, and that's kind of what you got to do day to day. You know, you got to be sticking up for yourself and you got to be not just like, well, I showed up at the restaurant and there was nothing healthy. So I guess I'm just going to have unhealthy food. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a victim mentality of thinking like, well, things just didn't work out for me. Well, if you're doing this, you're in charge of your health. You got to make your own health happen. So that can mean eating before so that when you go out with friends, you're not that hungry or you don't eat at all, um, that's one option. Another option is to, to bring your own food, especially if you're going to a friend's house and bring a lot. Bring more than you would eat so that people go, oh wow, that salad looks really good or those mangoes look really good. You can, oh, I got enough to share, you want some? And they go, oh, okay, yeah, oh wow, this is really good. You know, and then um, it's not that weird thing like this is my special food and you can't have any. No, no, share, bring more than, bring, you know, you, um, bring more than enough to share and enjoy it and um, don't act like it's weird act like it's normal like yeah. you know um, if you get defensive about it people are going to pick up on that like oh what's what's Ritu doing she's acting so weird Ritu what, what is this stuff you're doing but if you're just like hey I got I got like you know this really good food uh, you want to try some people are just kind of act more like if you act like it's normal they act like it's normal and then when you go to a restaurant, I would say, just order, you know, say, hey, I, I, I got a special condition. My doctor doesn't want me to eat certain foods. Can you make a salad that's just like, you know, lettuce, tomato, avocado, um, you know, something really basic. And, um, and usually, you know, when it's that simple, they're like, oh, well, we got all those ingredients lying around. We can do that. Uh, but it takes practice, you know, and once in a while, you're going to make a mistake. And um, you're going to pay the consequences. And then, you know, you get back on the saddle, you get back on the horse, so to speak. You, you go back to, you know, your regular routine that you want to do. And then the next time you hopefully don't make the mistake. But if you do make the mistake, you don't let it be a snowball effect where, you know, you just keep going. You just, you just brush it off. Like I've made plenty of mistakes, falling off the wagon a million times back in the beginning. You probably can't make more mistakes than I did. <laughs> uh, so don't worry about it. You know, because you got to think long term. So that's my answer. I think it's most of a self determination. Like Dr. Brené Carr, Brené Carvajal has written, the first step is always the hardest. Agree to it. Uh, uh, you know what? Um, I'm going to speak to you more, but also I'll be keep taking questions from whatever we get from the audience. Sure. So I have my first question here from MS Lex, and she has written, "What about gluten in your diet?" Everyone is different, right? So there is yeah. no one fits all diet. Um, I would say probably there's definitely some parameters that work for everybody. 
Um, people are going to have sensitivities to various foods for various reasons. And how to heal those sensitivities is probably a subject for another very long video. Um, but I think that with, um, with gluten, um, and we just got a question about soy. Uh, yes. Wheat and soy are heavily sprayed with a pesticide called uh, Roundup or glyphosate, which is the active ingredient. And that causes gut permeability issues, which leads to an autoimmune cascade. And so I would advise against using those foods. Um, there's plenty of other foods to eat um, that are much healthier. Um, and I would say, you know, like at least exclude them for, for a period of time and see how it affects you. Um, because I, uh, I, I think that there's definitely healthier options. So I'm not a fan of those. I know that some people can still get away with eating them, but I, I, um, it's not something that, that I think is uh, an overall good move. I have to tell you this. So I'm from India. And in, in India, we do eat rice, we do eat chapati, which is full of greens. So, you know, when initially when I had stopped eating everything, and my doctor was like, why have you stopped? And I was like, I know I read that in MS, you should not eat gluten. He said, had, has it affected you adversely? I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> so he said, then, so everybody is different. So if something is okay with you, you can eat. If it is not okay with you, and trust me, I keep trying, you know, every time. So since last week, I have not taken gluten at all in my diet. And um, I'm trying to notice changes in my body, but I think, you know, everybody is different. And since childhood, I have been eating gluten a lot in my diet. So I think for some people it might suit and some people it might not. But uh, specifically, soya is supposed to be a very debatable topic. Some yeah. people say that it is misunderstood by many. It has lots of proteins, while some say it is, you know, it has lots of pesticides and chemicals. So it can also give, you know, something like a cancer or breast cancer kind of problems. So I would like to know a little more about soya from you, doctor. Sure. So I think soy definitely gets um, a worse rap than, uh, than uh, it probably deserves. There's definitely a lot of misinformation about there, especially like the phytoestrogens in soy are somehow bad. I disagree. Um, I think that, um, you know, there's whether an actual estrogen in animal products, which is, is way worse. And we see that the phytoestrogens actually um, take up the, re the receptors in, in um, in the human body and actually block regular estrogen from binding, which uh, actually fights cancer. Um, but I think that for gut health and autoimmunity, if you're suffering with that, um, that the, the glyphosate load, the Roundup load is reason enough not to have soy. That's my main objection with it. I think a lot of the other things are kind of made up by the meat and dairy industry to sound bad. Um, so I would just advise people, um, you know, experiment on yourself. I used to eat a ton of gluten and soy all the time back when I was um, unhealthy. It just, it was just, that's what, you know, I love this stuff. I ate it all the time and I took it out of my diet. I reluctantly, I was like, Oh, I don't want to be one of those people who doesn't eat gluten. They're so obnoxious and annoying. <laughs> um, but I did it, you know, for a few months and then I went back and I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe I'll just have a slice of pizza. This is in the early days. And it was just like immediate inflammation cascade, like the eczema yeah. flare up pain flare up like whoa okay bad decision um so uh I mean, that would, and uh, i would have similar things when i went back and had uh, tofu again and so you know maybe there's an advantage to having organic tofu which is you know isn't sprayed with pesticides isn't sprayed with uh, roundup which you know is carcinogenic and uh, <laughs> causes all these problems um so uh, that's that's my take on soy. I think it does get a bad overall rap, but if you're dealing with an autoimmune condition, particularly MS or another severe one, I think it's something that you got to stay away from at least for a while until you heal um, the leaky gut condition. And then, you know, I would advise probably organic soy is okay, but the 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 run of the mill uh, non organic stuff that's just loaded with pesticides and treated with hexane gas, and there's a lot of things that are done to it that make it unhealthy, whereas soybeans themselves, probably actually pretty healthy. Okay. Okay. Speaking on the, about the other question that I've got here, it's, it's by Dr. Rene. And he has written, what do you think about the gut-brain barrier, like one of the factors for the MS, 
pathology among other autoimmune CNS diseases. The, the gut what? Gut brain barrier. Oh, gut brain barrier. Uh, well, there's a blood brain barrier. Um, and there's a gut brain connection, but I don't think there's a gut brain barrier. Um, so I'll, I'll speak to the gut brain connection. And that's definitely that, um, that uh, the, the gut and the brain influence each other. And that there's a giant bundle of nerves um, uh, called the, uh, I think the mesenteric plexus. There's two bundles of nerves that line the gut that are, you know, the biggest nerve bundles outside of, of the brain. Mm. And so a lot of the nervous system is actually in the gut. And, um, okay, so someone asked blood brain. So I'll talk about gut brain connection and then I'll talk about blood brain barrier just so everybody's happy. Um, so um, we know that, um, that the microbiome, the bacteria that live in our guts um, can actually, um, when they eat food, <laughs> can actually secrete neurotransmitters that actually hijack um, part of the nervous system in the gut, a uh, nerve that's called the vagus nerve that comes directly from the brain to the gut and directly from the brain to the heart, and a few other organs. And they can actually send neurotransmitters back up that nerve to the brain and make the brain crave junk food, <laughs> okay? Because they, uh, the bad bacteria want to eat the bad food. And they'll actually, um, through the gut-brain connection, hijack that and trick your brain into wanting junk food. So you gotta starve these guys out and feed up the good stuff. Um, the blood brain barrier is basically this, this um, barrier that, says that the brain holds that not everything that goes to the bloodstream gets into the brain because some of it's toxic to the brain. Um, mm -hmm. But the problem is that there are certain, certain um, uh, toxic substances that are inorganic like pesticides, polysorbate 80, which is in a lot of drugs um, that could actually open up the brain and toxic things that shouldn't get into the brain, like heavy metals and pesticides and other things can get in there and cause damage. Um, so that's why it's really important to eat, you know, organic things that aren't sprayed with pesticides as much as possible because you want to keep that blood brain barrier tight. You don't want to get uh, toxicity into the brain. Of course. Of course. Okay, doctor. Um, moving on to the other question that I have here is by Ruthi Hani, and she has written, "How bad is white flour? Because in India we have too many recipes made by white flour and corn flour. Can you please advise on that?" Sure. Um, so I don't know about what's going on in India, but um, in uh, in America, using white flour, it, like it's so heavily processed and chemical laden with with toxic additives and pesticides. You know, there's the pesticides they put on the wheat in the beginning, and then they process it and they add more pesticides and bleach and all this stuff to the white flour. And um, there's just it, yeah, it's, it's GMO. Um, uh, there's just yes. so much chemical additives to it that I really advise staying away from it. Um, if you're making like homemade corn flour at home, uh, where you're just like grinding up corn kernels and making it into a flour, that's, that's a little bit different, especially if it's, you know, organic corn that was sprayed heavily with pesticides. That's, uh, that's a little bit different. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I would say overall, it's, it's phew, the farthest thing from health food that you can get, white flour. So avoid, avoid, avoid. avoid. Okay. And the other question is by E.B. and she has written, what do you think does diet affects spasticity in any way? Spasticity? Um, yes. Okay. Um, is this specifically in relation to MS or? Uh, uh, should be in specific with MS, but spasticity can happen to anybody for that matter. Sure. Um, I guess so. You know, spasticity is a, a neurological issue. Um, yes. So you know, it, like it can be diet related. It often is. Um, okay. Sometimes there's just neurological problems that go beyond the scope of diet that are happening, causing spasticity. Like you can have cerebral palsy. Well, you can't really heal cerebral palsy with diet. You already have permanent brain damage. Like there's, there's not much you can do uh, there. Um, but, uh, yeah, in regards to MS, like diet you know, and spasticity, diet can definitely help, um, improve that symptoms. Okay. Uh, what kind of diet do you think, you know, the person can take to avoid spasticity in that matter? 
Um, it would be a, a plant-based diet with as much, you know, raw food, fruits and vegetables, fruits and leafy green vegetables as possible. I know I heard, I saw your video about detox, you know, it was quite interesting. So yeah. I really want to request you if you can tell a little about detox and why you should be plant-based rather than animal-based and everything that you explain in that video. Sure. Uh, so about detox and then why we should do what? A plant-based diet. Why not animal? Because oh, okay. animals already, yeah. I saw your video, so I remember everything. <laughs> okay. Oh, we got so many questions here. This is great. We just got a question about organic dairy and MS, so I'll try to answer that. So yes. detox. The body is always working to detoxify itself at all times. It's doing the best job it can. And guess what? Most of us are doing a really good job at toxifying the body. And so the body's always fighting back. And it's sort of one of those things where it's always on the edge. Like you're throwing this much at it and it can kind of handle this much. And so um, let's say the, the toxin load is like building little bit by little bit because the body's getting more toxicity than it can detox to give it time. But you begin to do things like eat healthier, you get rest and, and uh, meditate and exercise and you, you do things to improve your health. Slowly your toxicity load comes down. And the amount of toxicity your body can process, you know, it gets more. And all of a sudden, the body can start working on getting rid of a lot of old stuff, pesticides, heavy metals, um, just uh, junk food you ate, um, all this stuff, toxicity that's built up in your liver and it's built up in your connective tissue and your skin or wherever. And the body starts, can start processing and dumping it into the bloodstream to be um, taken away by the kidneys. Um, but the, your body's holding so much built up toxicity from decades that if it just tried to process that all now and dump it in the bloodstream, you would literally die. You would literally die. So it can just do it a little bit by a little bit. And if you're toxifying yourself a lot less by eating healthy, lots of fruits and vegetables, plant based diet, um, the body can begin to deal with the backlog of, um, of old toxins and slowly, slowly. Um, get rid of them. And you may experience symptoms. You may experience mm -hmm. disease symptoms while this was going on. I remember uh, the first time I was eating an all raw vegan diet and about you know, 40 days in, it started getting red blotches all over my skin. I didn't know. It was like my eczema had gone from my hands to all over my body for about a day or two. And I was like, oh mm -hmm. my God, what's going on? And then poof, disappeared. And my eczema never came back in my hands. It was like the body had just gotten rid of all that stuff on its own. Um, and so uh, a plant-based diet is definitely the way to do that. Um, a meat-based diet, there's, there's so much toxicity in the meat. These animals are, are fed just um, horrible diets of just like uh, GMO, corn, wheat, and yes. soy. And even if not, they're exposed to so many pesticides over their lifetimes that they bioaccumulate in the meat tissue. And you're ingesting all of that when you, when you eat an animal-based diet, a yes. dairy. Uh, someone asked about is, is super toxic. There's so many compounds in it. Um, the casein, which is carcinogenic, um, the, uh, the heme iron, which is carcinogenic, um, like, uh, the overall acid load of, of these things is, uh, definitely, it's not health food at all. Um, so your body has the ability to detoxify itself. It's not something you want to take a supplement for or do some sort of protocol to get it out of your body. Your body can do it itself and that's the best way it knows better than any chelation formula or whatever someone's selling out there as a supplement um it, yes. let the body do its thing and that's by providing it the right conditions and um you try to shortcut that you try to figure out a way to do it faster and cheap cheap the system it's not going to work let your body do it itself um, i hope that answered the detox question absolutely and yeah i really want to hear that from you and I want people to know what actually detox is and your body your itself heals so you really don't have to depend on any kind of supplements so yeah. okay I'm moving on to the next question here uh, what a, what a, by Evie and he has written what about supplies for to boost our energy um, so okay so supplements to boost energy Yes. Um, I'm not a really big fan of supplements. I think there's really only two supplements people need to be taking unless there's very extenuating circumstances. So um, uh, I think that one supplement that can help, these, both of these supplements can help if you're experiencing low energy. Um, mm. But you, you know, 
you may be experiencing low energy for a number of reasons, not just efficiency in these two things. So um, that's that, you know, you got to look at there's many reasons to diagnose low energy. Um, but if you do what we talk about of eating healthier, um, you know, it should fix the problem. Uh, two other supplements, vitamin B12, which is, um, this is a, a, a vitamin that's produced by bacteria. It's not, produced, it's not found in animal foods. It's not found in plant foods. It's produced by bacteria that live in the soil and live in your colon. Um, and you don't want to be eating out of your colon. You don't want to be eating dirt most of the time. So it's best to take B12 as a supplement. Um, and then uh, vitamin D3 is another one. And this is, it's actually more of a hormone than a vitamin. And um, your body creates it when it's exposed to sunlight. Not everybody gets a lot of sunlight or enough sunlight. Um, and generally, most pe the, the normal range is something like 20 to 90. But really, to have optimal health, you want that number to be like 50, 60, 70, 80. Um, so highly recommend taking a vitamin D3 supplement. Um, again, for everybody. And um, it will help with low energy. But if you're still, you know, you get those levels up, you're still dealing with low energy. Well, you got to make sure you're, you know, eating a healthy diet, you're getting enough rest, you're getting exercise. Um, those things can all contribute to uh, low energy as well. Because if you're not sleeping enough, you'll always be, of course, you'll always be tired. Like you can't just take a magic pill and hope it's going to give you energy. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I agree. You know, speaking about supplements, you know, I remember when this coronavirus outbreak happened, everybody ran to get vitamin C tablets and they started having vitamin D, magnesium, vitamin C, and so many other tablets, you know. Uh, so what do you personally suggest that if there's a COVID outbreak, what a person should do or should, should not do to take care of themselves and be safe? Especially people with MS are really scared of it. So, Sure. Okay. Um, and I would say that my prescription for uh, what to do to stay healthy um, is, is no different than if there's a, there's a coronavirus outbreak versus there's no coronavirus outbreak. Um, that doesn't change, that the human organism still obeys the same laws of nature. And so that's eating a healthy plant-based diet. Yeah, vitamin B12 and D3, take as supplements, um, getting enough rest, um, getting enough exercise, taking times to do, um, to do de-stressing activities, like uh, meditation, being out in nature, um, that uh, I think especially dur during, um, during a time of uh, stressful time. So I guess, you know, the pandemic can be stressful. You really gotta make sure you're focused on um, doing things that mitigate stress. Yes. Whether that's meditation, uh, there's things like breath work, tapping, I teach all of these. These are ways to calm the nervous system and get it out of that fight or flight scared mode because if the nervous system is all, um, freaked out and trying to, um, to deal with what it perceives as threats, it's actually going to forget about the immune system and, and try to just um, <laughs> work out, make the heart beat faster, do things like that. You don't, you don't, the body doesn't need its heart to beat faster. It needs to have a, have a good immune system. Yes. So um, stress mitigation is super important. Um, but overall, the prescription for health doesn't really change. Um, I've been teaching the same stuff for, you know, eight, nine years. It hasn't changed. It still works. <laughs> okay. Okay. Moving on to the next question by Madhura Sagari. And he has written, can we have raw good after having Lemtrada? Uh, raw goat? Go any raw good he has written. Maybe good raw food. He must be meaning raw food after having Lemtrada. Uh, I'm not too familiar with the drug Lemtrada, so I can't mm -hmm. can't comment. Um, but uh, raw foods, fruits and vegetables um, should should never be <laughs> something you question with. Like eat as many of those as you can. Yes. Like enjoy them in abundance. Yeah, there's no upper limit on raw fruits and vegetables. You can't eat too much. The science supports <laughs> that. You just need to enjoy it. <laughs> Yes. Okay. I think you've already ordered, a, uh, sorry, you've already uh, spoken about organic dairy. Um, by, so Erica, I'm going to skip this question for now since it's already answered. Um, I've got another question here. So Nupur has written, my sister got diagnosed with MS in April itself. Her first symptoms being optics neuritis. So we are not much aware of the diet and lifestyle. So 
she's helping or asking you to suggest for someone who is newly diagnosed with MS. So what should the person do? Sure. Um, great question. And optic neuritis, for those who don't understand, is an inflammation of the optic nerve. So your eyes hurt and your vision may be impaired. That's the, the nerve that goes directly from your brain to your eye. It makes sure that you like transmits the information from your, comes into your eye to your brain. Um, so you can lose your vision with uh, optic neuritis. Is, ugh, very bad stuff. Um, so uh, my answer for that, uh, I do have an e ebook. If you go on my Instagram profile, Dr. Benjamin Benulis, it's called the Autoimmune Recovery Blueprint and explains a lot of this. Yes. But, um, but, you know, it's a very good question. You, you got this, you don't know. What do I do? Uh, I just got diagnosed with this stuff. I'm new. I don't know where to start, right? That book explains it really well. But basically, you want to um, drastically increase your fruit and vegetable intake like we talked about. Um, you want to um, focus, you know, like I said, including more. Just work on including more. Don't worry so much about what foods you got to take out and all that. Um, mm -hmm. Work on what foods you got to add in. Add in a lot of fruits and vegetables. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Make sure you uh, have some sort of spiritual practice or way of uh, mitigating your stress, whether that's meditation, tapping, breath work, um, things like that. Um, staying positive. And, um, and that's, that's, uh, that's pretty much the formula. And then you build on it as you go along and you build healthy habits and you get better and better at doing it. Uh, but the book, the book explains um, a lot of it. But uh, yeah, like green smoothies, salads, mono fruit meals, that's, that's, um, that's how you tackle this for sure. Right. And I have something to add to this. So uh, for also there's been so many people now I'm kind of newly, you know, who are currently or newly being diagnosed with MS. So first thing I would like to say, you know, just do not panic, you know. It is MS and you have MS. MS doesn't have you. So always remember this quote, please. And be positive. No matter what happens, you're going to win over this. Okay. That's why we are here to help you. You all only have to do is take care of yourself with good diet and exercise well, sleep well, do not take any kind of tension or stress and be positive. These are the four or five mantras which will sail you across all the problems that you have. So do not panic. In terms of lifestyle, you have to have good sleep, good diet, good eating habits, good um, exercise or meditation or yoga or any activity, physical activity that really you enjoy, you know, and stay away from all the stress and all the negativity around you. So yeah, and everything will be fine. <laughs> so that's my piece of advice to everybody who is new, newly diagnosed with MS. And yes, diet, good diet does help you overcome many symptoms. Like doctor himself is a big example here. Yes, he overcome all his 100% of symptoms with good diet. So you have to have trust in that. Yeah. So um, moving on to the next question, doctor, I have a question by Howley Boys. And he has written, what are your thoughts on adding vegetable protein powders to the smoothies? Sure. Great question. A lot of people, you know, very concerned about protein intake. I want to make sure I'm getting enough protein. So I want to add uh, protein powder to my food, to my smoothies. And, you know, they, maybe they get to the point where they go, okay, I want to eat a plant-based diet. I don't want to be adding whey protein powder, dairy protein powder to my food. I know that that, that can't be healthy. Um, I think that um, that's well-intentioned. I'm not a fan of the, of the veggie protein powders. I don't think that they're necessarily bad, but I don't think that they're helpful either. Um, so, for example, you take something like um, hemp protein powder, right? Like they make protein powder out of hemp. Well, what do they do? They take hemp seeds and they strip out the fiber, mm -hmm. and they strip out the carbohydrates, and they strip out the water. And in that process, they strip out the vitamins, the minerals, the enzymes, the cofactors, the phytonutrients, the nutrients that are only found in plants that we don't even know the names of. You strip out all this other nutrition, you're just left with powder, right? Like the good stuff, yeah. we got the protein powder, right? Here we go. <laughs> um, <laughs> That's a bad idea. Yeah. Like, it sounds great, but look at all that stuff you, you, you tore out, you know? So um, why not just eat hemp seeds? Why not just, you know, oh, there's pea protein or rice protein. Why not just eat rice or eat peas? You get way more nutrition. Um, right. And, and, and uh, protein, 
is, you know, way overrated. Like we think that, oh, you need protein. Um, there's enough protein in plants that you don't need to supplement um, refined plants on top of regular plants to get enough. And in fact, protein is not preventative against any disease, it's not curative of any disease. And too much protein, especially too much animal protein, actually causes disease. So, yes. Um, yes. so this mentality that we got to get enough protein is actually counterproductive. Like what you got to get enough of is fruits, vegetables, rest, exercise, meditation. Okay, those would be the things you could sort of get enough of. Yes, absolutely. When you have everything available and in the natural form, why not just consume that? And everything too much is also a problem. Everything has a limit to consume, right? Yeah. Um, so I have an interesting question here by, uh, okay, I'll, um, by Erica again. And she has written, do you recommend D3 with K2? Um, no. I, um, if you can, if you want, but I don't think that um, K2 is something you uh, need to supplement. Uh, if you do have some sort of um, like blood clotting disease, like Christmas disease or hemophilia or something like that, then like you may want to take a vitamin K supplement. Um, but uh, for most people, I don't, I don't see it as a necessity. That's great. Okay. The other question is by Thanos John. And she has written, is there such as something as too much sleep? Um, no. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people, especially in the 21st century, are, you know, have, have a sleep debt that they've incurred over years and years and years of not sleeping enough, especially when they're including um, stimulants in their diet, coffee, soda, energy drinks. And so they're, they're, they've been chronically getting five to six hours of sleep a night for years. Um, uh, it's going to add up and you got to pay that debt back. Okay, and you can pay it back by getting more sleep, or you can pay it back with bad health. And that's your decision. And I went through a period of, you know, in my 20s, I, I barely slept. And I, um, I, I, I had a day job in the corporate world. And then for a while, I was staying up late at night to do things like stand up comedy, and, um, and things like that. And I barely slept. And so when I wanted to heal, I had to, I had to uh, catch up on a lot of rest. So no, there's no such thing as too much sleep. Um, just this thing is, you know, not too much thing is um, eating too many fruits and vegetables. Most people are sleep deprived. Get your rest. It doesn't mean you're lazy. Um, it's your health. It's the most important thing. And if you don't have your health, there's so many other things you can't do. You got to put first. So definitely no such thing as too much sleep. And don't let anybody tell you that you're lazy or there's something wrong with you because you're sleeping too much. Um, yes. If your health is your priority, make it your priority. Yes. Stand firm in yourself. And don't don't listen to anybody who says otherwise. Absolutely. I'm um, moving on to the next question by Prothi Hanu. She has written, Doctor, my daughter who just 20 years, years old, she has been recently diagnosed with MS. So want to know what precautions should I take for her? Some people advise to avoid milk, coffee. Please help me with her daily diet. So I understand you've spoken about milk, but coffee and tea is the topic which I actually want to get into too, as well. So if you can answer that along with this question. Sure. So, I mean, I think I already answered of like what to generally do if you've been newly yes. diagnosed with MS. Yes. Um, so coffee and tea is a good question. And I think I alluded to this just a moment ago when I was talking about most people are um, drinking stimulants every day, um, coffee namely. Um, and you know, coffee is probably the one of the most used drugs in the world. And um, the coffee industry makes a lot of money. So they put out a lot of research that says, oh, coffee is such a health food. It's so good for you. You know, uh, you'll live longer if you drink coffee. Um, but really, it's, it's, um, it's corporate junk science. And um, people don't want to hear this. They don't want to hear that coffee is bad for you. Hate to be the bearer of bad news. Sorry. But caffeine, which is, you know, the active stimulant in coffee, is actually neurotoxic. Okay. okay, it's at least, what it does is it, it stimulate your shocks your adrenal glands, okay, okay, which are these two little glands that sit on top of your kidneys, and it shocks them into producing adrenaline or epinephrine, which is a stimulant chemical, which um, that's why you get that buzz and you get that you feel like you have more energy. And as someone commented, stimulants lead to, to uh, adrenal fatigue because it doesn't actually give you 
energy. It just shocks your nervous system into going into overdrive for a while. And guess what? That's a debt that you eventually have to pay back. And so if you're doing coffee every day, you're building up more and more of this adrenal debt. And um, it's, it's not a good thing. And so there's this trend to, oh, fast by drinking coffee to suppress your appetite. Um, bad idea. Okay. It is, it is neurotoxic. MS is okay. a neurological disease. It's one thing you really want to avoid. Will you be sleeping more? Probably when you're not drinking coffee. Because uh, you, have, you have, like we talked about, you have sleep debt to pay back. You, your body needs that rest. Don't deprive it of rest by shocking it with, with toxic uh, caffeine. Bad idea. Okay. Okay. Um, now, I have a suggestion from Dr. Vene here. And he, he has suggested for one of the previous questions asked, he has written that for Lentrada, you should avoid uncooked food and unpasteurized milk for Listeria okay. risk infection. So thank you, doctor. Um, moving on to the next question, doctor. Uh, yes, this is very interesting. And doctor, I think many people actually come up with this kind of question. That uh, you know, can you tell something about food and depression? They say that when you are sad, you actually have food cravings for sweet things and such, you know, or even fried things for that matter. What do you think? Is depression related to food or food related to depression? How does it go how's it entangled sure um i think that there's there's definitely a relationship um it's not com depression is completely dictated by um by food but it can play a role and then when you eat healthier you will feel happier um but a lot of us are conditioned by society to use food as a means of um of uh artificially changing our feelings, right? Like, yes. oh, I feel sad, I'm gonna eat, and I won't feel sad. Yeah. Yes. Um, I'm angry, or I'm, I'm, oh, I'm happy, I'm gonna celebrate by eating good food, <laughs> right? Absolutely. Um, um, and so for a lot of people, when they begin to eat healthier, it really becomes a struggle, because um, they're so used to modulating their emotions with food, that they begin to feel things that they are not used to feeling. They are used to, oh, when that feeling comes up, I'm gonna suppress it with food, eat a cheeseburger. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to eat yeah. pizza. Uh, and they have cheap days. And so these food cravings are actually just inability to deal with emotion. Um, okay. And so I went through this too. And so this is why, you know, I talked about meditation and all this stuff is super important because um, a lot of us are just unused to feeling our feelings. And we have to learn how to do that. That becomes a, yeah. a, um, a different skill set. Um, and so... Um, what I would advise is you have to work on your emotional health as well. Um, that's why I teach all this stuff like um, breath work and tapping and, and uh, meditation. Um, there's a, if you're dealing with depression, yes. I, th let's th take this piece of advice. There's a guy named Tony Robbins you may have heard of. And he teaches this exercise called priming, which is basically a 20-minute visualization and breath work exercise you do every morning. And if you go on YouTube and you type in Tony Robbins priming, there's a bunch of videos where it walks you through this exercise. Do it first thing when you wake up. It sets you in a positive, uh, happy state by thinking about things that you're grateful for, thinking about goals that you want to accomplish, thinking about um, you know, things that happen in your life that you're happy about. It, it sets your mindset straight. And it's a really powerful tool if you're dealing with depression. Because yes, eat healthier, absolutely. But you got to work on your mental health. And that's outside the scope of food. There's no food that's going to cure you of, of mental health issues. That's something you have to work on outside of it, but they're definitely very intertwined. Food can help you feel better. But um, if you continue to use, try to use food as a crutch to, to suppress negative feelings, you're gonna, you're gonna get stuck in a bad loop. But it happens to a lot of people. It's not an easy thing to do, but um, great question. But so, just yes. to tell, tell me one thing, when a person has a craving for sugar or salt or something like that, it is also said that, you know, uh, people, someone must be having some kind of deficiency, some vitamin deficiency or protein deficiency. So how a person can know? Is it, you know, just that the person is getting craving out of the mood or is it a kind of deficiency in the body that is causing them to have that kind of craving? Sure. Great question. I don't think it's a deficiency per se, mm -hmm. but um, if you're craving sugar, it's because you're not eating enough fruit. Okay. okay. Yeah. Um, Right. The, the, the sugar craving is the brain's idea of saying, I want something sweet. And guess what? 
10,000 years ago, you couldn't go to the store and get a Snickers bar. That wasn't, you were like, oh, sugar craving? That wasn't an option, right? Like you could yeah. go, go to the tree and pick a peach and eat it um, or a bunch of peaches. Um, yeah. But um, that, that, that was the only sweet thing that existed. The body wanted the nutrition and fruit. So yeah. eat fruit, the sugar craving is satisfied. But if you go and you eat candy, well, the brain got the sugar, but it never got the vitamin C and, and uh, vitamin E, A, B, um, fiber, all the things that, it, that were in the fruit that it also wanted. It never got any of that nutrition. So it says, well, uh, I don't know what happened, but we didn't get the nutrition. So it sends the sugar craving again. And when you go, you, go, you eat more junk food, you feel worse. And it's like the sugar craving never gets turned off because the brain never got what it wanted. And so you just like eat and eat and eat until you feel horrible. But you sit down, you, um, you know, eat a bowl of, bowl of blueberries, right? It's lots of sugar, okay, but it's in fruit form. And you feel satisfied. You feel full. You feel good. The craving doesn't come back, you know, at least not till the next day um, because you, you got what the body really wanted. So same thing with salty cravings. The body's just not getting enough vegetables, right? So you got to up your vegetable intake. So uh, it's hard to do when you're like really craving it. Wow, you know, the best thing to do is just it, like eat the stuff beforehand, eat enough, and the craving doesn't come. I don't get sugar cravings. It, I don't, I just eat fruit, you know, it's great. Um, I so, have to say this, you are, you know, explaining everything in such an interesting manner, you know, I just cannot just stop listening to you. You're so good. <laughs> and you're answering all the questions so well. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, and um, for everybody watching, Miss Jelly Legs, just put the uh, priming uh, video. In, like, do that every day. I so recommend that. It's like one of the greatest things that you can do if you're, if you're dealing with depression or it's just like the the coronavirus pandemic and there's so much fear and uncertainty and like you wake up and you oh I don't know what's like I feel like so scared about everything going on do the priming like it puts you in a peak state super important all right thank you Jenny Lex thank you so much for help so because you helped me so much I want to take your second question here <laughs> so Jenny Lex has asked about legumes what do you think about legumes doctor legumes yeah. Um, I think that when you're in the, you know, acute phase of really trying to heal from an autoimmune disease, I think that um, they're, they're not optimal, um, that they can be, you know, difficult to digest, especially if you have an uh, autoimmune condition that's digestive in nature, like Crohn's disease or colitis, it could just be too much um, on the digestive system. Um, so I know that I didn't eat legumes for years uh, because they, they really bothered me. Um, but, uh, I would say that if you do eat them, try to have ones that you soak yourself, um, and, and prepare as opposed to like eating canned beans or stuff like that. Um, but, uh, I would say for the most part, if you're really trying to, to, in the healing phase, um, really try to avoid them and just stick to as much fruits and vegetables as possible. And, um, and if you find that you add them back in and they don't bother you, good. But I know for a lot of people with autoimmune disease, they can, they can aggravate it. I know what, uh, with legumes, it's my personal experience that whenever I have legumes, I love legumes, by the way, delicious. But whenever I have them, you know, I feel fatigued. I don't know why. The next day, I feel, till 24 hours, I feel a little fatigued, tired, and I'm not myself. I just wanted yeah. to sleep the entire day. It happens to me. There, there are a lot of work for the body to digest. Oh. So, yeah. Okay. Oh, we got a question on here. I really want to answer it. Do you think <laughs> there could be a correlation between hemochromatosis and Hashimoto's disease? Fantastic question. So uh, hemochromatosis, for those who don't know, it's a genetic disorder where your body um, can't properly process iron. And so you have excess iron in, in your, um, your system. It actually causes problems. Um, and then Hashimoto's is an autoimmune thyroid, thyroiditis where, um, where uh, your body, your immune system attacks your, uh, your thyroid. So hemochromatosis is straight up genetic. Um, Hashimoto's is an autoimmune disease that's acquired. Um, and interesting enough, uh, my girlfriend had both. She had um, uh, hemochromatosis. She was born with and developed Hashimoto's later in life. Anyway, doing what I do, we reversed the Hashimoto's, she no longer has it. But hemochromatosis, genetic disease, you know, you can manage it. You eat a healthy plant-based diet, that's probably like the best thing 
you can do. Um, she used to have to get um, bloodletting basically, like once every few months, because there'd be so much iron in her blood that like they would have to go and like draw it out and take it out. Now it's like once a year they have to do that. So uh, plant-based diet has dramatically improved the hemochromatosis to where it's barely a problem and we've reversed the Hashimoto's disease. So I just thought that was a great story. Um, but hemochromatosis is a super rare disease, super rare, but definitely manageable with um, plant-based diet. Super rare and super scary. Oh my God, difficult to manage. You know, thinking about them, that gives me shivers already. <laughs> okay, I, I know we have been talking about plant-based diet, but there's someone by the name of Fevi and, and he's asking, what about eggs? Can a person have eggs since it has lots of proteins in them? What do you suggest? What's eggs? Oh, uh, for a number of reasons, eggs are one of the worst foods you can <laughs> you can eat for your health. <laughs> Absolutely one of one of the the worst. I could get into it. Um, you know, this like the the cholesterol, the saturated fat, um, the like the difficulty of, of digesting them, the lack of fiber, lack of you know vitamin C. Uh, they're just ugh, just awful. Uh, no on the eggs. Okay, so yeah, heads up, no X to everyone who's asked me in person, no X. Okay, I can see another question about quinia. What do you think about quinia as a diet? Is it a good what, addition? Uh, about what? Uh, quinoa, uh, oh, I'm not sure how to pronounce them. Yeah. Oh, okay, um, I think that, um, yeah, I think it, it it's, um, probably secondary to fruits and vegetables. It's one of the foods that's pretty health promoting. It's good. It's easy on digestion. It's really yes, more fiber. of a, uh, yeah, fiber. Uh, it doesn't have vitamin C, which is kind of a loss. But um, for the most part, I think that um, if you're going to eat grains, I, I think it's, it's probably one of, one of the best as far as like ease of digestion and ease of assimilation and, and, um, and all that. Um, Doctor, we have already answered this question, but however, I'm going to just still bring it here. How prone are MS patients to COVID? Is it too worrisome? Um, great question. I don't think we have data to know um, whether or not that, um, you know, um, MS makes you vulnerable to, um, to, uh, to COVID. I will say that there are certain immunosuppressant drugs used to treat MS where they say, okay, the immune system's attacking the brain. We don't want that to happen. So we'll suppress your immune system. All right. And this happens across the board with autoimmunity. They go, oh, immune, yes. immune system attacking the body. We got to suppress it. We got to stop that. But yes. we know that when we suppress your immune system, well, there's a problem, right? You kind of need your immune system to fight disease. Yes. Yes. And you need, you know. You need fight the virus, yeah. Um, yeah, so uh, that can definitely make you vulnerable. If you're on an immunosuppressant drug, absolutely. Uh, just having MS in general, uh, we don't know. We don't know. But you take the best care of your health that you can. Yes, so uh, there have been lots of news articles lately which say that these are the uh, number of drugs which are immunosuppressant. So, you know, if you are taking any of them, you need to consult your neurologist. But otherwise, there has been no mandate given officially by the doctors across saying that you have to stop your medicines. It's not said that way. Okay, uh, moving on to the other question, which is again interesting. So we, we know that seafood has lots of omega. And so there's a question by Howley Voice again. See, he's asking that what about dropping meats but still keeping seafood? What do you think about that? Doctor, before we move on, you know, uh, it's been almost an hour we have been talking. Do you want to continue taking these questions? Or sure, I'll to go to the end. I'll answer, yeah, as many. You know sure. what, I actually have to plug in my phone. I'm low on battery. One second. Sure, sure. So it's really interesting talking to Dr. Benjamin, right? Oh, I'm just loving the way he's explaining things, you know. He's just, you know... Um, talking, talking in such a nice manner, he's making us laugh and he's making us understand every small little things of why should we do something and why we should not do something. If you have more questions, please write down here. But wait a minute, after three minutes, probably we will get disconnected because there's a gap of Instagram of one hour. Hi, doctor. So I'm okay. just saying there's a gap of one hour on Instagram. 
So this and how, how far are we? How much time have we used? We have three minutes left. Oh, okay. So what was the question? <laughs> Yes, we can continue this question for now. It will be over in three minutes and then we can join back again. Okay. Yeah. So this question is about dropping meats and keeping seafood. Oh yeah. Great question. Um, so, and we talk about omegas, right? And people say, oh, there's omega in seafood. Omega-3 is important, which I don't yes. contest, right? There's omega-3 in, in seafood and um, that is definitely helpful for you. It's anti-inflammatory, but the problem is when you're eating anything that comes out of the ocean, the ocean is one of the most polluted things in the world. And it doesn't matter what ocean you're talking about, Pacific, Atlantic, Indian Ocean, Arctic, it gets all, you know, um, mercury, heavy metals, every, every um, toxic drug or pollutant known to man, PCBs, DDT, birth control pills, uh, it's all in the ocean. Yes. And it's all in the seafood, right? You so you're getting that. that. Um, so I don't really recommend it. And that includes like algae and plants that come out of it, like seaweed, also super toxic, all right? If you want omega-3s, you want to get them from um, seeds that are rich in omega-3s, hemp seeds, flax seeds, chia seeds, okay? Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's the best option because, yes, the ocean is dirty, as, as Erica says. Um, yes. it, it's oh, just a sea of toxicity. So you'll get the good stuff. You'll get the omega-3s, but you'll also get a bunch of bad stuff why not only get the good stuff and you get them from um, nuts and seeds? Um, so, uh, yeah, someone says, I love seafood. Seafood and the ocean don't love you back, unfortunately. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, people don't think that way. Is that sea is the most polluted body, actually. And people think, oh, seafood, it's healthy. Take, eat. You know, that's what people do, do usually. So, um, Sturm204, it has written, don't you think it's weird that a lot of MS patients have hemochromatosis? My husband also has MS. Um, I didn't know about the, that the um, that they happen together a lot. That it's a lot of people. Queen, yes. Uh, that's news to me. So, um, is there some sort of link? I I can't postulate. Maybe it makes you more prone to getting MS. Um, but uh, that's something I, I actually didn't know. So. Um, I, I can't comment on that. I, <laughs> sorry. Okay. Um, I can see the question by Rika and she has written, I wonder if there is something between iron overload and MS. Um, so not that I know of, but like we talked about, um, you know, uh, hemochromatosis is iron overload. So, um, they seem to correlate, but as far as any sort of, um, you know, causative link, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, um, this is the other question that I have by Nupur. Can we take omega-3 capsules in place of seafood? Um, so if the omega-3 capsules are fish oil and that's coming from the ocean, it's still just because it's a capsule form, they didn't get the, the heavy metals out of it. Um, so I really recommend getting the omega-3s from food and getting them specifically from hemp seeds, chia seeds, flax seeds. All right. I can see the question here by Lisa Moore, and she has written, what about Maven Clad? But I think we should take this question after 20 seconds when we reach her. Okay, I've never heard of Maven Clad, so I don't know. But, uh, okay. Yeah. We'll reconnect, I gotta find a charger, so give me like a sure. minute. Um, and sure. Yeah, we'll do another one. Okay, awesome, yeah. okay. okay. Okay, all right, see you. Hey, hey doctor. Hey, we're back. I was able you to plug in charger? my phone and refill the water. <laughs> All this talking, I get thirsty. <laughs> I know, I know. I'm the same here. It has to be with me all the time. <laughs> this has been so much fun, and I'm, I'm happy to go as long as you want to go answer all the questions. So let's bring more questions. I'm loving that's, it. That's really kind of you. Thank you so much. Um, I can see a question again by Evie. Uh, and he's asking about chicken, but I know you have already answered that plant-based diet is something that you're recommending. Um, I can't, okay, I have another question by Nupur. Is ghee advisable? Do you know what ghee is? Ghee? Ghee? Yes, okay. it's, it's clarified butter. Yes, uh, absolutely. <laughs> we call it yes. as ghee. Um, no, not a fan, fan of ghee. Um, no. Uh, in general, um, excess fats, clarified, like refined fats, 
uh, like he even plant plant refined fats like oils right. um, definitely not health promoting and gonna gonna make MS worse. So I would say, and I know telling Indian people you can't have ghee is <laughs> is like like telling American people you can't have coffee. They're like, what? Oh my god. <laughs> Um, but uh, if you want to get well, uh, it's, it's, it's only going to hurt you. Right. Now, talking about oil, I had to ask you this, you know. So we do a lot of cooking in, in, in Indian homes. So the trend is we do not eat much of raw things. It is used, salad is always like a side dish along with the main food that we eat. So for cooking, what kind of oil would you recommend? It, would it be a olive oil or a rice oil? Or we have hundreds of oil nowadays. Um, if you absolutely have to use an oil, which I do not recommend. Okay, like, let's put out first <laughs> off, do not recommend using any oil. Okay. Um, so I recommend baking or steaming if you're going to cook food. All right, frying it because when you heat a fat, uh, you change its state and you actually it becomes carcinogenic. Um, so it's one thing to eat it at room temperature. And it's way worse to eat it heated. Um, so uh, it, it, it changes the chemical structure of the fat and actually makes it much more toxic to heat the fat. Um, so I, I really don't, me. Yeah. Um, I, I really don't recommend um, using any kind of oil. Um, you know, there, there are people that will say, you know, there, there are certain oils that are, that, are, that are less unhealthy than others, but no oil is really healthy. So the oils that are less unhealthy that I still don't recommend having at all, but if you're gonna actually do, you have to have oil. Which again, if you want to reverse chronic disease, you're probably not gonna get it, pull it off having oil in your diet, but it would be like olive oil and coconut oil would probably be the ones that I would say okay. um, are the least unhealthy. Okay, all right, done. I'll take that advice. <laughs> okay, so uh, I've got the question by Erica again, and she has written that pregnancy can put MS in remission. Is possible? Um, you know, I have pregnancy is interesting um, because it, it can put autoimmune conditions in in remission. Um, it can also make them worse. Or um, you know, you get pregnant and then uh, it goes in remission, and then you have the baby, and then it comes mm -hmm. back worse. Yes, I thought of that. Um, yeah. So the mechanism of how that happens is not well understood. But yes, that can happen. Um, and it's just sort of luck, um, whether it gets better or it gets worse. You don't want to be relying on luck. You want to be relying on, um, on yourself and working mm -hmm. on healing yourself in all the ways that we talked about today. Okay. Um, doctor, another question which I have for you is we have not spoken about sodium. What do you think sodium is like for a person with autoimmune disease? Um, sure. So sodium is a nutrient. You definitely need it. Um, there's the issue of, you know, you want to get your sodium from your food, okay? Um, and so the foods that are going to be highest in sodium are going to be celery, and um, Swiss chard and kale, all right, leafy green vegetables. Uh, right. When you start adding, adding sodium uh, in terms of like table salt um, yes. or soy sauce, yes. um, it, what it can do is it can actually um, cause you to overeat. And so the, the salt acts as a stimulant and you put it on foods and like if you, okay, if you, for example, you have, you boil plain white rice, right? Right. And you eat the white, you just you try this, you eat just plain white rice and eat as much as you can until you're full. Now, the next day, go and make plain white rice, but add some salt to it and see if you eat more rice when it's got salt added, because you will, because it acts as an appetite stimulant. Um, so you want to try to avoid added sodium. I know it's difficult, especially when you're first starting this and people are so used to eating all these processed foods that have salt added meat has salt added to make it actually taste good if you had meat that didn't have salt <laughs> you would you would be like whoa what am i eating um so um salt is something you you want to try to avoid or at least in the beginning wean down on its use because it is an appetite stimulant it will cause you to overeat especially cause you to overeat unhealthy foods um, a lot of processed food 
wouldn't taste good if you didn't add salt to it. Yeah. Um, yes. But when you start to um, wean down your salt intake, then um, like natural foods like celery starts lettuce tastes good up by itself um, because you're not, yeah, you're not yelling at your taste buds anymore and they can actually taste things on their own. Yes. So, uh, so sodium, absolutely a vital nutrient. Get it from leafy green vegetables. Adding salt to your food, not recommended. Slowly wean yourself off of added salt. Okay, then. Um, the other question which I have for you is what about the different kind of diets that we have? We have swanky diet, we have keto diet, we have baby diet and all the kind of uh, fancy name diets. What yeah. is your opinion about those kinds of diets and should someone go ahead with this or should it be avoided or just be simple with plant-based diet? Uh, sure, good question. I mean, I think, I think they all have merit um, and they'll work to some degree. Um, but obviously you want to have the diet that not only reverses MS, but doesn't cause other problems, right? Because um, last thing you want to do is trade one disease for another, right? Um, so, you know, the swank diet is mostly like a vegetarian diet that includes some fish. Um, I think when Roy Swank designed that diet 100 years ago, there wasn't the problem of all this pollution in the ocean. And mm -hmm. fish was a slightly healthier choice. But I think you're better off without it. So I think he was on to something. Uh, and I think that the plant-based diet builds upon that and is a better choice. But the swank diet is definitely better than eating pizza and cheeseburger. So like, let's be straightforward, right? Mm. Um, now, there's a big trend um, towards these low-carb diets, whether it's the paleo diet, the primal diet, the keto diet, it's really hot. Terry Walls' diet is basically like a, somewhere in the spectrum of that. Yes. Um, that these low carb diets, you know, get some success because they avoid things like the GMO corn, wheat, and soy. They avoid the processed foods and they avoid the junk foods. Um, and a lot of them avoid dairy, which we also talked about as toxic. Right. You know, they still include meat. They often still, often still include seafood. It's a step in the right direction, but I think ultimately um, these, these low carb diets are going to lead to things like, um, blood sugar issues they're going to lead to heart disease and atherosclerosis so they make they may reverse your autoimmune disease when you're 25 but then you could die of a heart attack when you're 50. Um, so like long term they're not a great solution uh, yes. but short term they get great results right and like oh i did a low carb diet and i lost all this weight and i'm like you feel really good in the short term um, but long term it's it's detrimental to your health mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think, you know, the plant-based diet is, is, is the one for optimal health, whether you're dealing with auto, uh, MS, any autoimmune disease, or just, you know, any chronic disease, or you just want optimal health, plant-based diet is going to be best. And the more that that is fresh fruits and vegetables, raw, uncooked, um, organic if possible, you know, the better results you're going to get. Um, so I think there's merit to some of the other diets, but I think, um, if you want the best shot at, at, at um, optimal health, a plant-based diet with as much raw foods as possible is, 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 is the best answer. All right. Um, doctor, I have to ask you this. So, for example, there's this one patient I know here with me. Um, she has MS and also she has a very high level of diabetes, for example. If she goes on, for example, um, um, just fruit diet, and fruit contains natural sugars, and some of them contains a lot of sugars in them. So does those kind of people with diabetes can also take up such uh, diet with fruits as a major part of the diet, or how do they actually balance it? You know, it's like sure, great question. So um, there's a lot of confusion in the diabetes community um, yes. about, about a lot of foods, right? And, um, and it's very confusing about they think that, like, since they're having blood sugar problems, they should avoid any carbs, especially yes. fruit, because it's high in sugar, which I don't contest. Um, but uh, this is very important for anybody with diabetes and anybody really who's, who wants to understand why eating fruit is so good for you. Mm. Um, fruit, contain, fruit, is, fruit contains sugar, but it also contains fiber phytonutrients, okay. vitamins, minerals, all these other things. The fiber is one of the most important things, okay? And we know that fiber helps you have better bowel movements. It feeds your good gut bacteria. 
Well, another thing that it does, which is super, super important, anybody with diabetes, listen to this. This is so important. Fiber actually slows the absorption of sugar into the bloodstream. Okay. So that when you, you know, eat a pineapple, all right, um, the, there's fiber in the pineapple. And so, the, you know, there's sugar as well, but the, the, the fiber blocks the absorption of the, the, the sugar in the bloodstream. So it happens a slow release over time so that the blood sugar level never spikes up and goes into that, that bad blood sugar spike that you see with diabetes. Um, so the fiber in the food is super important. Now, if you were to drink a Coca-Cola, right? There's no fiber. So you drink right. it and it's just like liquid sugar right in the bloodstream. Exactly. That's yes. a problem. That's bad. Um, oh. But if you're juicing fruit, uh, you're juicing apples or oranges, there's no fiber in that. It's going it's to be a problem for somebody who has blood sugar issues. But if you're eating the whole fruit with the fiber intact, it's actually right. one of the best things you can do for MS and for diabetes. So um, there's, there's someone I want people to check out. If you have or dealing with type one or type two diabetes. If you know someone who is and you want them to get help, Mastering Diabetes, that's their Instagram. If someone can type that in the comments at Mastering Diabetes, one of the best resources to check out. Someone says, I eat pineapple every day. Do you know anybody who got diabetic because they're eating too much pineapple? No, people got diabetic because they're eating cookies and cakes and steaks and bacon, okay? So um, people who are, eating di uh, who are diabetic are barely eating any fruit. Uh, so I hope that explains it. Okay, um, I have another question by Aliari, and uh, this is very interesting. Um, intermittent fasting. Uh, he says that intermittent fasting has a really good effect for MS. So need to know what's your opinion. And sure. again, I have another comment by Becky on the same thing. She says that I do 20 hour fasting because when I eat, I am not as productive as I am when I am on fast. Okay. So what's your opinion on intermittent fasting? Great question. Um, I think, you know, it's, and it's a nuanced answer. I'm not going to say I'm in favor of it or I'm not in favor of it. Um, I happen to be intermittent fasting right now. My last meal yesterday was about 4.30 p.m. It's now almost noon here and I haven't eaten yet today because I haven't been hungry. Uh, probably after the call, I'll eat. Uh, but sometimes I'm having my latest meal at 7 p.m. at night, and sometimes I'm having my earliest meal at 8 a.m. in the morning. Um, so I don't follow a strict protocol of like whether I, you know, I only eat between 12 p.m. and 8 p.m. or whatever. No, I, I eat when I'm hungry and I don't eat when I'm not hungry, okay? And so um, that's, that the most important thing is getting in touch with your actual sense of um, satiety and hunger and knowing when you're hungry and knowing when you're full, stopping when you're full, which is easy to do when you eat whole plant foods. Because when you get full on whole plant foods, you don't want anymore, okay? But if you're eating junk food and you get full, you're like, oh, I still want to eat more. Oh, now I feel, I don't stop when I'm full. I stop when I feel sick, right? Yes. Um, so once you reintroduce a natural diet of, of natural foods, um, uh, you, you begin to understand when you're hungry and when you're not. I just haven't been hungry yet today, so I haven't eaten. Um, but trying to restrict yourself to a specific window and you know, not eating when you're actually hungry is, 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 not, is not a good strategy. Because eventually what's gonna happen is you, know, you, you can maintain this sort of artificial um, intermittent fasting for a while, but eventually you're just gonna get so hungry, you're gonna, yes. you're gonna binge out. You're probably not gonna be able to yeah. when that happens. Um, so the principle of, of not eating when you're not hungry and eating when you are hungry, great move, okay? But trying to like, trying to box it into this artificial window of I can only eat between these times and I can't eat between these other times, mm -hmm. it's just gonna cause disordered eating. Um, so I'm not a fan of that. And then people will use coffee as a, as a, as a, as a uh, appetite suppressive. They're like, well, yeah. I'm intermittent fasting. I'm yeah. drinking coffee. Well, you know, you're not fasting. That's yeah. coffee is, and we talked about how coffee is neurotoxic and amino yes. and um, appetite suppressant. Really bad idea. Uh, artificially suppressing your appetite with chemicals. No, 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 no. Get in tune with your appetite and learn to eat when you're hungry and not eat when you're not hungry. That's that's the important thing. So I hope that answers the question on intermittent fasting. 
right uh, i'm in the question by second wave designs and he has written what is your typical breakfast like typical breakfast every day is what's called a mono meal of fruit okay so for ev and i do this almost religiously every day the first meal of the day is fruit it is usually high water fruit that's in season okay. um and it's usually one type of fruit so um right now it's summer in arizona in the united states where i live the mangoes are in season i'm eating just mangoes for breakfast every day like four <laughs> or five six mangoes for breakfast and that's it nothing else okay, okay. <laughs> um, in fact i'm like now talking about this i got like six mangoes in the fridge that are really ripe and i'm just so excited to dive in on those mangoes maybe i'll only eat four of them but i got i know i got six ripe ones right now um but yes one type of fruit one okay. type that's like the easiest for the body to digest the easiest for the body to assimilate great energy from that um you know you want to keep your diet as simple as possible so um you know you can, i could eat a bunch of different types of fruit you know um like make a bowl and have strawberries and mangoes and blueberries and some pineapple like that would be pretty good but i like the simplicity and the ease on the body of just having one ingredient so that's usually what i do high water fruit that's in season so you know in a month you know mangoes probably be gone like by end of september there's no more mangoes yeah. i'm doing grapes i'm doing pineapple um i'm doing um pomegranates uh stuff like that so it changes with the season what i eat but it's always high water fruit that's in season one at a time for breakfast and do you have bananas every day in your meal yes i pretty much make a banana smoothie for lunch every day wow. so that's uh, bananas that are right up yeah. like this yeah. like we see all the spots okay yes. that's when you want to be eating them that's when they're going to digest the best and taste the best okay. um and i'm blending those in a smoothie with greens well almost every day okay what do you prefer you taking like taking it as a smoothie or eating it just like that um i prefer as a smoothie it's faster like i may, i don't know how many if you sat down and eaten 10 bananas in a sitting it can be done but um the smoothies tends to taste better be more pleasant experience easier to do uh, okay yeah. okay and so i can see you know we've all we have been speaking for 1 hour 30 minutes now and, wow, okay. and it's it's your lunch it's your breakfast time you've not eaten anything since morning i don't want to keep you hanging for so late and uh, it's have, okay i i love doing this uh so if you want to end it now it's fine but if you want to keep going i'll keep answering questions so that's fine uh, i think we have um so almost all the questions that we have got okay um let me see if i have any other question to ask you otherwise um i think we have answered all of them almost so okay but anyways before even you know i want to ask you that can you just tell a little about your autoimmune recovery blueprints that you have you know you can just sure. tell a little about it to us um sure so that autoimmune recovery blueprint is a free ebook um when you get it you sign up for my email list but it tells you just like the basics of what to do if you've been diagnosed with an autoimmune disease and um you know really what it is is like if i could create like go back in time to 10 years ago to 2010 when i first got sick and say here ben just do th just do this stuff and then like figure the rest out that would be what i would do um so it's really just like the nuts and bolts of like um you know why fruits and vegetables are health food how to include more of them in your life how to do things to um uh, reduce your stress load on yourself um is that super important for you know maintaining a healthy lifestyle um so just the, the nuts and the bolts and, and the basics to get started um because you know some people might see this and go oh man i need to start eating like 20 bananas a day and 10 mangoes a day and like i had a lot like i can't do that like no this is just the place to start okay and and build the some people can dive right in you know that but that's like 1% of people most people they kind of need to figure it out as they go along so it's enough to get started and then um if people want to learn more you know i i have you know programs that I offer and stuff um and thanks for people who are you know miss jelly legs and everybody who puts that in the um in the uh comments um, but yeah it's really it's, it's the basics it's the fundamentals and then um just work on getting the fundamentals down like that's so important people want to get fancy like oh I got to take 600 different supplements and I got to make these elaborate recipes it's like whoa don't get overwhelmed just stick to the fundamentals so that's that's what I I want to construe to everybody
wonderful doctor thank you so much for your, your time today it's a sunday morning for you and you've only given me one and a half hours that's fabulous uh, and i hope you have a good day ahead and you know what i think uh, people love your program you know they love your session and sometime we can we can do this again sunday it's when you're free absolutely yeah this was this was one of the best interviews i've done in a long time so thank you awesome. yeah i can see jerry likes already writing that i already have your pdf tomorrow is the reading day and <laughs> russell news has written how do we join your program uh so just send me a message on instagram and and uh, we'll we'll figure that out okay absolutely i'm so sure many people will now get connected to you and you'll be having lots of messages from everybody Okay doctor thank you so much for your time and have a great day and it was a pleasure 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 talking to you it was such a happy fabulous session for me today it, it was for me too and thanks for all that you do Rita you do a great work keep it up keep up the great work and if you want other people to bring on your channel let me know i can find you some people oh, with yes, great speakers yes absolutely okay. that's a really kind of you to say that thank you okay you're welcome all right, all right. have a good day Bye -bye. thanks bye Okay guys it was such a wonderful session i really loved talking to dr benjamin he was fabulous isn't it he answered all the questions in so much of detail and with such nice happy happy way well i love speaking to him and i know you loved him too everybody's writing awesome and brilliant and thank you and everything okay thank you so much for guys for joining us and next week again we'll meet again with the other doctor with more talks and more specialty and we talk and learn a little more about ms all right have a good week thank you so much bye